The Final Settlement of the West In the 19th century, Americans widely believed that the expansion of the United States throughout the continent was both justified and inevitable. Right after independence, the United States quickly began expanding west, with the idea that settlers were taming nature, adapting to their environment, and bringing civilization and American values to the frontier. In this video, we'll take a look at the process of final settlement of the West, the key role of the expansion of the railroad network, and economic activity in this region. The painting that you are looking at is called American Progress, and was painted in 1872 by John Gast. It is a representation of this process of settlement and modernization of the West. Take a close look. See if you can find elements to understand the symbolism behind it. Migration is the movement of people from one place to another. The 19th century will see a great migration to the western part of the United States. But why were people migrating? Sometimes, migration is based on push factors. These are factors that cause people to leave a place, like ethnic or religious persecution, drought, poverty, war, or political instability. Other times, migration is based on pull factors, or factors that attract people to a new place, such as cheap or free land, political freedom, mineral discoveries, or the completion of the transcontinental railroad. Both factors were important in the settlement of the West, but certainly pull factors were crucial in attracting new settlers. An important early pull factor was the mining boom. Miners were the first to arrive in the West. Gold discoveries in California and the Rocky Mountains attracted prospectors with the hope of striking a fortune. Take a look at this map. Notice the gold and silver discoveries in the West. They were crucial in attracting prospectors and settlers. With the arrival of prospectors, boom towns would spring up wherever gold or silver was discovered. Then as minerals wore out, the towns were abandoned and became ghost towns. The Transcontinental Railroad The completion of the Transcontinental Railroad became another pull factor in westward migration. The Pacific Railway Act provided federal subsidies in land and loans for the construction of a transcontinental railroad across the United States. Two railroad lines connected in Utah, the Union Pacific Railroad coming from Omaha and the Central Pacific Railroad coming from Sacramento. A six-month sea voyage was replaced with a train ride that took over a week. Railroads made immigration to the West easier and connected farmers and ranchers to their markets. Refrigerated cars on trains kept agricultural products fresh for much longer. In 1869, both railroads were connected in Promontory, Utah, completing the Transcontinental Railroad. There was a major labor shortage, and Chinese immigrants came to the U.S. to work on the railroad. The work was tiresome, and workers faced dangerous work conditions. Accidental explosions, snow and rock avalanches, which killed 
hundreds of workers. As the railroad was completed, it connected the West to the rest of the country, creating new opportunities and expanding markets. The Cattle Kingdom There was a 20-year boom in the cattle industry. Cattle was driven all the way from Texas to the railroad lines in Kansas. On this long drive, the cattle grazed on the short grasses of the open range, public lands that were not fenced. By 1886, overgrazing had destroyed much of the grass and the open range began to be fenced with barbed wire. That summer was particularly hot and dry, killing a lot of cattle. It was the end of the cattle drives and the end of the boom. Take a look at this map that shows land use in the west. Identify the area where cattle was raised, shaded in orange, and the area used to grow crops in light green. Notice how the railroad network greatly expanded and look at the purple lines that represented cattle trails connecting ranches to railroad lines. The American Bison The American Buffalo, or Bison, was hunted to the edge of extinction in order to sell hides. The destruction of millions of buffalo in the early 1870s took away the main source of food for the Plain Indians. The Homestead Act Free or Cheap Land for Settlers The Homestead Act promised settlers 160 acres of land for $1.65 an acre after improving it for six months, or even for free if they would farm it for five years. Railroads were selling land cheaply to attract settlers. In 1889, the federal government authorized the sale of 2 million acres in Oklahoma, which had been a territory set aside for the Indians. Ads like these ones, promising cheap land in the Western territories, appeared in newspapers throughout the East, attracting many settlers. African Americans also settled in the West. African Americans migrated to the West, especially to the state of Kansas. Black migrants were called exodusters. The exoduster movement of 1879 was the first general migration of black people following the Civil War. The federal government set up troops in forts to protect settlers from American Indians. Many of them were African American and were known as Buffalo Soldiers. It was a Buffalo Soldier in the heart of America. The Farming Frontier Farmers adapted to the dry conditions of the Great Plains by using barbed wire fences, sod houses, wells for groundwater, windmills to pump water, steel plows, and farm machinery. One of the adaptations was sod houses. Since the traditional building materials, wood, rocks, or clay were not available, farmers built sod houses made from thick clumps of grass and soil, cut into bricks. Another important adaptation was barbed wire. There was a lack of wood for fencing. In 1874, barbed wire was invented. It was cheap and easy to install. It was effective in keeping cattle in the pastures, off the fields, and railroad tracks. Buffalo chips, or dried buffalo manure, was used as a source of fuel for heat and cooking in the near total absence of wood or coal. Buffalo chips was the fuel of the West. The area was dry due to the lack of rainfall. 
Settlers had to dig wells to tap into underground water. Windmill pumps were used to bring water to the surface. Farmers used steel or chilled iron plows to break the tough dry soil more deeply to preserve moisture. This technique became known as dry farming. The steel plow greatly reduced the number of man hours required to till the fields. Other technologies, such as the mechanical reaper, also increased efficiency in production. Sod houses, wells and windmills, buffalo chips, the steel plow, and barbed wire, all of which made the settlement of the West possible.